So yesterday Gearbox rolled out the Phase 2 patch. I mean, I would have covered it, but I was a little busy covering the DLC of the Bounty of Blood, which is uh, pretty cool. But today we're going to get through the entire patch notes, uh, and there's quite a few changes here, some that even surprise me. How's it going guys, my name is DPJ and today I'm bringing you another BR3 video. If you do enjoy it, leaving a like really helps out and subscribe if you do want to see more. Okay, so we're going to read through the entire thing as per usual. Now this is a hotfix or patch you will already have applied to your game. Okay, so new content. Added support for Borderlands 3's third campaign add-on Bounty of Blood. Due to complications related to the ongoing pandemic, only English and German voiceovers will be available at launch for Borderlands 3's third campaign add-on Bounty of Blood. Localised subtitles for all supported languages will be available at launch and localised voiceovers will be added at a later date. Increase the level cap by 3 to 60. Added 3 new Guardian rank skills and Guardian rank increase. Groundbreaker melee or slam attacks will trigger an aftershock, dealing 25% of non-melee damage you have dealt over the last 5 seconds. Deadman walking. While not moving in fight for your life, your meter drains 50% more slowly and led or alive. When you enter fight for your life, all your guns are automatically reloaded. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so we're going to move on to stability. Addressed a reported crash that could sometimes occur during a mission, the family duel in Floodmore Basin. Addressed a reported concern when the game could become unresponsive after alt tabbing out on PC. Addressed a reported crash that could sometimes occur when the host backed out to the main menu. Okay, so Mayhem Mode. Added Mayhem Level Damage Scaling to Melee, Slide and Slam. Added Mayhem Level Skill Damage Scaling. Added Mayhem Level Pet Damage Scaling. Added Mayhem Level Vehicle Damage Scaling. Updated several passive skills to properly respect Mayhem Level Damage. The damage sources above now scale their damage accordingly to the level of Mayhem you are in. Each type of damage is scaled uniquely to account for how difficult skills and gear interact with the different types of damage. This is a significant change and we'll be monitoring the community's feedback intently and adjust gear, skills or damage scaling to ensure that build diversity flourishes. To accommodate this scaling, a few passive skills were updated to a new form of damage that prevents them from scaling inappropriately. Added skill damage as a rollable stat on class mods. Pretty cool. Class mods now can roll additional bonus skill damage when paired with the base mayhem level skill damage scaling. We anticipate builds centered on skills to become viable in late mayhem. Added mayhem levels to grenade mods. Grenade mods drop as weapons doing mayhem with additional damage relative to the mayhem level it was acquired in. Enabled all sources of loot to spawn mayhem gear. Mayhem gear can now be acquired from all sources of loot in the game. Vendor machines, chests, mayhem mission rewards and loot enemies all have a chance to reward mayhem level weapons and grenades. Change damage source for remnant. Short fuse indiscriminate, do upon others, and ties that bind to address that they double dip and scale inappropriately at higher mayhem levels. As a result of this change, players will notice that ties that bind will not scale properly with action skill damage. This is a temporary fix that will be addressed in a future update. Vehicles now scale damage uniformly instead of just against non-vehicles. Addressed a report of concern where the split screen players could sometimes not scroll through the Mayhem 2.0 modifier list. Addressed a report of concern where the Mayhem modifier drone ranger healing drones sometimes did not replicate position smoothly for clients. Addressed a report of concern where the tether from the boundary issues Mayhem modifier would sometimes persist after enemies died. Addressed a report of concern where the Mayhem Vehicle Damage Scholars sometimes did not apply when players were in gunner seats. Addressed a report of concern where the Laser Fire Mayhem modifier would sometimes generate new laser beams when it took damage. And added the ability for Digiclone and Iron Bear to support damage scaling. Cool. General. Addressed a reported issue where vehicle health would sometimes be cut off. And not advised hotfixes. General. Melee and action skill damage further increased. Weapon adjustments, and this is the big one people. We are looking at adjusting manufacturers and weapon types across the board to bring greater parity at the base level between weapons. 
We are still monitoring balance between legendary gear, but wanted to first address groups of weapons to increase opportunities for weapon builds. All pistols will see a slight increase with Jacob's pistols receiving the smallest bump and Malouin pistols receiving the largest. As enemy health pools increased, low mag sized weapons like pistols became less popular. The damage increase across all pistols should provide more opportunities for builds to equip a pistol to accommodate their other weapon choices. We also increased damage of all TDO SMG weapons because we believe the damage from the thrown weapon explosion will be an integral part of the loop. However, throwing the weapon was impractical compared to shooting enemies with other SMGs. Now the trade-off to throwing at full magazine versus shooting will be more dramatic. COV, Darl and Jacob's assault rifles were increased to match some of the Vladov assault rifles. We will evaluate Vladov assault rifles in totality after players try the changes to the other manufacturers first. Finally, we increased the damage of our traditional multi-pellet shotguns Hyperion, Maliwan and Jacobs all received their damage increase. Some of these shotguns were underperforming compared to fast firing weapons, so now they will pack a greater punch. Increased pistol damage across all manufacturers. Increased damage on all TDO SMGs. Increased damage on COV Dahl and Jacobs assault rifles. Increased damage on Hyperion, Maluan and Jacobs shotguns. Bounty of Blood Hotfixes these hotfixes are related specifically to the Bounty of Blood campaign add-on. To receive the changes and avoid seeing any of these issues arise, make sure that you have your hotfixes applied at the main menu. Remove two straggler townfolk that were clapping their hands at a long time. That's hilarious. Address a potential progression blocker where Flak, the Beastmaster, was sometimes unable to grab an important ledge. Stop Juno from sometimes getting stuck on a walkway addressed instances where cash registers would sometimes float. So that is it people for the phase 2 patch which should be applied to your console already. Now going through some of these it's well definitely some interesting changes here definitely to weapon damage. I spoke to a dude last night on my discord after this patch had been applied by the way and he said shotguns just didn't feel right at all even after the damage buff they have received. I'm going to do a little test in there myself and I'll probably bring you guys my findings. But I'm definitely interested to see because uh, I've got a couple of TDO SMGs come to mind I want to try it out. So we will see about that. And also the COV, Dahl and Jacobs assault rifles. I mean there's some pretty beastly assault rifles in the game. They do talk about how they're going to evaluate flat off assault rifles in totality after we've basically played and used the assault rifles in the game right now. But some decent COV assault rifles which I feel just don't get used enough and with this change, with this buff, with this damage buff to them you could see a couple come out of woodworks now but we will see guys. But yeah that is the patch notes phase 2 patch which should be applied to a console or PC already. But on that note we have come to the end. If you guys enjoyed it leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more Borderlands be sure to subscribe and if you never want to miss a video upload you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. Also, if you'd like to support me directly and become a member of my channel, you can by hitting that join button. It really helps out. Again, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.